it's another day at the lair We're working together Ain't no job that's too big Cause we can make it better We've got Rob in the robot Teach us to build Work hard together For a better future We've got Rob in the robot And Orby too Hey guys, welcome back! I'm really excited that you decided to join us on another adventure! Today's lesson is super special! It's what I would say is really close to my robot heart! <laughs> Did you know that a robot is an automatically operated machine that helps to make things simpler? You would think that all robots look as cool as me, but some of them are actually much different. Because of how simple they are, we sometimes don't even notice that they are considered robots! Robots are actually popping up all around us. We just don't notice it. I know a bit about robots also because I attend a weekly staff club where they build and program robots to do all kinds of fun things. They you know that all robots have some sort of central processing unit similar to a human's brain. Robots are programmable and that means we can write instructions to the brain and the brain carries up those instructions through the robot's motors. I also know about robots. Robots use sensors the way humans use their senses. Some sensors used by robots include color sensors. These sense different colors. For example, a robot might sense the red color of a traffic light and a robot's program and then sense a man where the robot to stop. What do you think happens when a robot senses a green light? Yes, indeed! The robot's program has sent a command for the robot to move forward. Depending on what you want the robot to do, robots can use many different sensors. Our robot kit has touch sensors, color sensors, and many others. Isn't, Isn't that awesome? All robots use motors, where humans use their arms and legs. Humans write instructions for robots, which are processed by the robot's brain, which then enables the robot to do some action. For example, a human might rise if a robot senses green light, then engage motors and make them turn wheels. This will result in a robot car moving forward when it senses the green light. Just like humans need energy, our robots also need to have a power source like a battery or some kind of connection to a power source. Our MRT robot kit is powered by a battery pack. Look at this! We'll be right back. We are the hands that will lift entire societies up and out of poverty and transform quality of life for the whole world. We are the minds who will work together to solve the greatest challenges facing our planet. The ones we know now and those yet to come. That's why it's so important to support STEM education and initiatives like FIRST Global. By investing in us, in me, you are investing in the future of the world. We're back! Whoa there! Information overload! Thanks for the amazing explanation, guys! There are robots used in factories, hospitals, homes, and so many other places. There are even robots in space. See that? Those are still considered robots, even though they look nothing like me. I'm sure with all my talking, you figured out that today's lesson is about robots. I'm so excited! Today, we don't really have a mission, but it's still gonna be super fun. And now, a word from Sir Joshua. Hi, everyone. This is Sir Josh, and today we will be comparing the engineering design process with the scientific method. While scientists study how nature works, engineers create new things such as products, websites, environments, and experiences. Because engineers and scientists have different objectives, they follow different processes in their work. Scientists perform experiments using the scientific method, whereas engineers follow the creativity-based engineering design process. In the scientific method, you first state your question, do background research, formulate your hypothesis, identify variables, design the experiment, 
establish a procedure, test your hypothesis by doing an experiment, analyze your results, and draw conclusions. In the engineering design process, you first define the problem, do background research, specify requirements, create alternative solutions, and then choose the best solution to develop, build a prototype, test and redesign as necessary, and then communicate your results. And those are the differences between the engineering design process and the scientific method. Thanks for listening. Hey Orby, come here. Say hi to the audience. Oh, hey guys, didn't see you there. What's today's mission? Well, we don't really have a mission today. I want our viewers to know more about robots. After all, I'm their favorite robot. So I want them to have all the knowledge in the world. Do you know who could help you teach the audience more about robots, Robin? Huh? Who would that be? Come on, Robin. You know this. Oh, our little friend. With the help of Tushant, we could definitely help our friends learn more about robots. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go visit them now. All right. Hey, 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 little one. Do we have a mission today? Hmm. Not really. We just want to teach all of our friends watching this show about ro ro robots. OMG, Robin Zhang, we need to help. Well, you know what to do. We gotta solve this math problem. Don't forget that you have to help too. Robin gets energy from correct answers. So let's solve this problem together. I have to solve this math problem to give Robin an energy boost. The problem is 53 plus 32. First, I'll arrange the numbers vertically so the 10's place digits and the 1's place digits are lined up. This means that the numbers in the 1's and 10's digit places should be written one above the other. Next, I'll add the numbers in the ones digit column, which are 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. I'll place the 5 under the numbers in the ones digit column. Now I'll add the numbers in the tens digit column, which are 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. I'll place the 8 under the tens digit column. So the answer to 53 plus 32 is equal to 85. Bye. Thanks for all your help, guys. Hey, what about me? <laughs> you too, Orby. So Robin, you said you wanted to teach our friends more about robots, huh? Oh yeah! I wanted to learn more about robots. What are you building there? Using your noggin, I see. Of course! I had to remember the engineering design method first. Can you remember the engineering design method? Uh... I remember it, but... First, we research the problem, and then we get ideas on how to solve it. Afterward, we design, build, and test our robot. And once we examine the results, we make improvements. Good job, Orby. I didn't forget it, by the way. Never mind all that. Let's see how your robot moves. Huh? But I spent so much time working on this, I swear I did everything right. Oh my, don't be sad. Remember we don't have to get everything right on the first try. That's just how life is. But don't sweat it. All we have to do is try again. And don't give up. We can try again by checking again. Did you miss anything? Hmm. I heard once that a robot needs a brain, motors, and sensors to function. What's all that about? Well, the brain literally serves as a brain for the robot. It holds all the information for the robot. 
The sensors detect and respond to some type of input from the environment. And then the motors help the robot to move. Whoa! So cool! Aren't you supposed to know this, Orby? You're a robot too! Well, I can't remember everything. Anyways, how about you check for a problem in the brain, motors, or sensors? All the wires are hooked up. What could possibly be the problem? Wait, I think I know what the problem might be. I've checked all the physical parts, but not the program. There must be a flaw in the program. Ah, I see it. The motor speed was set to zero instead of 10. If it's at zero, my robot isn't going to move at all. Yay! You found the problem! I think you really helped our friends out there to learn a bit more about robots! Totally! High five! five. Today was pretty fun, even though we had no mission, right? Actually, we did have a mission, Orby. Huh? What do you mean? Teaching our friends about robots and helping Tushant was our mission. I guess so, Robin. I'm glad that Tushant learned to never give up. And I'm also glad that we got to teach our friends who are watching from all across Guyana more about robots. I say, today was a success. Totally! Today was awesome, guys. Make sure to tune in next week to see what other crazy adventures we go on. See you guys next week. Visit us at robintherobot.tv